no, I'm not saying that the boy doesn't want to go into the army. It's just that, no, what I'm trying to say is, well, it seems to me that two weeks from today, at the induction center, oh, he'll be there. Oh. oh, Rosie, thank goodness you've come. This is the end of the Alme Lu Music Corporation. Conrad Birdie is going into the army. And your faithful secretary is hereby submitting her resignation. <sighs> I just stopped in to say goodbye, Albert, darling. Lots of luck. Oh, Rosie, you can't. Not today of all days. Pills. Where are my pills? The little white ones I take when I'm overwrought. <laughs> Here. Uh, not so much. Break it in half. You're 33 years old, Albert. You can take a whole aspirin. <laughs> I am not 33. I'm a long way from 33. I won't be 33 until tomorrow. Oh, water. It's no use, Albert. My mind's made up. I've been with Alme Lou eight years now, and as you well know, I've been a lot more than just a secretary to Rosie, you. Rosie, those were moments of madness. <laughs> well, between the moments of madness and the office, I've put in a 90-hour week. And for what? A $5 raise in 1954 and a bottle of Arpege last Christmas. <laughs> Promise her anything, but give her Arpege. <laughs> uh. Yeah, but not a sixteenth of an ounce. <laughs> and besides, I want something more than that. Rosie, if you're referring to anything of a more permanent nature between you and I, well, <laughs> I'm not ready for it. Besides, there are religious differences. Spanish is not a religion. <laughs> and if it's part of the company you're after, the answer is no to that, too. Now, may Lou is me, Mama, and Lou, and any change in that would kill that wonderful woman who bore me. Nothing could kill your mother, Albert, except maybe a silver bullet. <laughs> And I won't drop poor old Lou either. He loved you, Rose. I loved Lou too. Sure, he was warm, he was loyal, he was lovable, but he died six years ago. And besides, he was a wired haired terrier. <laughs> Anyhow, it's not part of the company I want. This is something much more important. Uh, Rosie, if you're going to discuss what I think you're going to discuss, well, I'm in no mood to discuss it. There's nothing to discuss, Albert. Conrad's going into the army. I've quit. There's nothing you can do but give up the business and go back to college uh, Rosie, and get Rosie, I'm up to my ears in debt. Conrad's got a $50,000 guarantee, which I can't pay. And I've just taken a severe overdose of aspirin. <laughs> Albert, this may be your last chance. Will you listen to me? His going in the army is the best thing he could do. Now you're free to start to do what you wanted to. Albert! Albert, Albert, I remember how you told me I should trust you for a year. It would just be for a year, but it's eight years, Albert. Eight long years, Albert. Oh, Rosie, it takes time to build a business. It was only a sideline, that's what you said. You just needed some money, that's what you said. You were going to college and get ahead. Instead of being a music business bum, you were going to NYU and become Don't say it, Rosie. an English teacher. Oh, no, Rosie, please. And furthermore, he wrote poetry. Rosie. And in the NYU yearbook for 1952, under Albert Peterson's favorite piece of literature, do you know what it says? Little women. <laughs> I'm finished in show business. An English teacher, an English teacher If only you'd been an English teacher We'd have a little apartment in Queens You'd get a summer vacation And we would know what life means A man who's got his masters is really someone how proud I'd be if you had become one then we would have such a wonderful life then I would be Mrs. Peterson Mrs. Albert Peterson Mrs. Phi Beta Kappa Peterson the English teacher's wife
Josie. I'll make a deal with you. Stay with me and help me get the money to pay for Conrad's guarantee. And, and I promise as soon as I'm out of the red, I'll, I'll dissolve the company and go back to the academic life. Albert, you're on. <laughs> of course, it uh, may take a while, and I'm sure that by 1973 or 74 at the latest, we'll, uh... <clears throat> What's that? Something that's going to push that date up a few years. Pick a name. Pick what name? What are you talking about? All right, I'll do it. Um... McAfee. Kim McAfee. President, Recording Secretary, Conrad Birdie Fan Club, number 2748 of Sweet Apple, Ohio. Mary, get me Sweet Apple, Ohio. The number is capital 78820, and call me right back. Wait a minute. What are you doing? Who is Kim, whatever the name is? Kim McAfee is what's going to send you back to college with the biggest hit song this business has ever seen. It's called One Last Kiss. I've never heard of it. You haven't written it yet. But when you do, and when that one last kiss is from Conrad Birdie going into the big, cold army for two whole years, and when he gives that kiss to one of his adoring fans chosen at random from 1,200,000 hysterical teenagers, it'll make Conrad Birdie the hottest soldier since Joan of Arc. Uh, Rosie, I'm beginning to see it. Uh, we cut the record here in New York. Take that greasy bongo-playing car thief to Sweet Apple. And then we let him kiss the kid. And release the record. Oh, Albert, you'll make enough money to stay in college for the rest of your life. Rosie, it's wonderful. <laughs> and I promise, as soon as this thing is finished, it'll just be the two of us in perfect bliss. <laughs> I'll even get a job teaching English. Bliss. Kiss. <laughs> that rhymes. I wonder if anyone's ever used it before. Now, what does it matter? It's perfect for the song. One last kiss. It gives me such bliss. What is your dentifrice? Ah, too clinical. <laughs> an English teacher, an English teacher, someday he may be an English teacher. Yes. Well, every phone in Sweet Apple can't be busy. What's going on there? Kim McAfee just got pit t Never mind, just keep trying and call me right back. Then we would have such a wonderful life Then I would be Mrs. Peterson Mrs. Albert Peterson Mrs. Phi Beta Kappa Peterson 